Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is platelets at long mass. So we've talked about the coagulation cascades, both of them, and uh, now we need to look at the other com major component of uh, hemostasis, which is platelets. So we're going to talk about platelets, um, their adhesion, so um, platelets adhesion, uh, their activation, and their aggregation. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to put it all together and uh, get a whole picture of what happens in hemostasis, basically. So platelets, adhesion, aggregation, and, oh dear, I've missed one out. Uh, the activation should have been in the middle there. So it should have been adhesion, activation, and aggregation. Uh, but never mind. Okay, so there we go. Right, okay, so. Let's talk about the story of this then. So, uh, the first thing I want to say is I've been uh, talking in both of the coagulation cascade videos about very small blood vessels, uh, you know, getting little holes in capillaries. But this can happen in major blood vessels, so to emphasize that, I'm going to talk about a major blood vessel now. So, let's have a big blood vessel here. So, some big artery, potentially. And now, um, we need to um, draw a lot of other layers. In capillaries, it was very nice and simple. You just had a basement membrane, and then you had an endothelium on that basement membrane. Now, you've got multiple layers. So, let's say these are the endothelial cells here, which uh, line the blood vessel, like so. Okay. And they are known as tunica media, uh, tu sorry, not tunica media, they are known as tunica intima. So they have their basement membrane underneath them, which are denoting green here. And that layer uh, of endothelial cells along with the basement membrane, that is known as tunica intima of the blood vessel. So tunica means layer, intima means, you know, very close. So it's right in the center, tunica intima. Okay, and then around Tunica Intima, you have another layer, which is the middle layer, and consists, uh, well, it depends on what type of blood vessel it is, but say it's a muscular blood vessel, then it's going to consist of mainly uh, smooth muscle cells um, in, um, in circular sort of structures like so. So basically you get circular circles of smooth muscle surrounding the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, and this, because it's the middle layer, is known as tunica media. Now, in other blood vessels, in blood vessels which are more elastic rather than muscular, then uh, this middle layer will consist mainly of inelastic tissue rather than uh, muscular tissue. But in a big muscular artery, then you'll have a lot of muscle there. So that's tunica media there, this middle layer. Uh, so tunica media, layer middle. Okay, and then around the outside of tunica media, you have finally tunica adventitia, the outer layer. Okay, so tunica adventitia. And basically, tunica adventitia consists of connective tissue, basically, that's going to connect the blood vessel into the surrounding, um, into the surrounding um, tissue, basically. So here's tunica adventitia in yellow, so it's connective tissue. Right, okay, so what could happen is that you could get a disruption or damage to the endothelium in a large blood vessel like this. Now, if you get damage to the endothelium here, let's say some sort of little sort of hole in the endothelium here, what's going to happen is that the blood is going to go into tunica media. And we talked in the previous video about tissue factor, this um, factor three, which is on the surface of somatic cells, basically. Well, tissue factor will be on the surface of the smooth muscle in tunica media. So you will get both uh, activation of um, the intrinsic coagulation cascade, because of course there'll be a huge amount of collagen in this extracellular matrix that um, uh, surrounds the smooth muscle cells, which will activate the intrinsic coagulation cascade, but you'll also get activation of the extrinsic coagulation cascade because uh, factor 7 will come into contact with factor 3 on the surface of these smooth muscle cells and will be activated to factor 7a. 
Alright, so that's the first thing to say, just to generalise uh, the concept of coagulation to larger blood vessels. Secondly, we are here to talk about platelets. So, um, now that we've got our big blood vessel and we've decided that we're going to end up with some hole in Chinica intima, then let's see what platelets are and what they're going to do. Well, basically, platelets are a component of the blood. And they are little fragments of cells like this. So they don't have nuclei. Uh, they're one of the few cells in the body that don't have nuclei. Uh, and um, they are tiny little fragments of cells. And really they are little fragments of cells. When you see how these things are created in the bone marrow, literally there is one giant cell uh, which basically just pinches off little bits of itself and then throws them into the bloodstream and that's what's known as a platelet. Now platelets have another name, they're also called thrombocytes, so if you see uh, anyone referring to thrombocytes that means a platelet. Okay, so you have these tiny little platelets in the bloodstream basically and they're much smaller than a red blood cell. To put it in perspective, if uh, this is a platelet, a red blood cell would be something like that sort of size. So they are small compared to the red blood cells. Okay, right, so what is their role in, um, in hemostasis? So let's say we've damaged our endothelium here, then we want to know what's going to happen to these platelets basically. What are these platelets going to do to help? Right, so in order to first understand how the platelets uh, are going to get stuck to areas where, um, where disturbance has occurred, then we need to look at the connection between the endothelial cells and this basement membrane. So let's say I've got an endothelial cell here. So here's an endothelial cell. And let's say I've got the basement membrane underneath. So this is basement membrane underneath. Okay, and this consists of collagen. So I've basically taken one of these little slices out here. So here's the basement membrane, which is made out of collagen. Basement membrane. And under, underneath it, I've drawn an endothelial cell. Basement membrane, and the important thing is that the basement membrane is made of collagen. And here's our endothelial cell. So the question is, how does the endothelial cell link to the basement membrane? Well, basically, it has a bunch of proteins which are expressed in its basolateral surface here, in this basolateral portion of the endothelial cell membrane, but not in the apical portion of the membrane. This is really important to understand that these are endothelial cells. They are polarized. So if this is another endothelial cell here, they will have very strong junctions between them, known as tight junctions, which will polarize the cell membrane, basically, splitting it into two portions, an apical portion and a basolateral portion. And proteins which are in the basolateral portion cannot just move around and get into the apical portion. They can move around up here, potentially, but they can't get past these tight junctions over here. So um, it's important to understand that polarization of the cell membrane. Okay, so in the basolateral uh, membrane of these endothelial cells, you have this certain protein, and this protein has a very famous name, and you've probably heard of it when I uh, give its name. It's got the name Von Willebrand Factor. Okay, so this is a very famous protein. Um, it's usually denoted VWF, and you usually put, it's convention to put the V lowercase and the W and the F uppercase, so von Willebrand factor there. Okay, right, so one, von Willebrand factor is in the basolateral surface of these endothelial cells and connects with um, the collagen in the basement membrane uh, of the uh, Chinica intima, basically. Now, this is the important thing. When the endothelium gets uh, disturbed in some way, okay, let's draw the endothelium getting disturbed. So you've got basically a hole in the endothelium. So let's say you've got a missing endothelial cell there, and you've also had the uh, basement membrane disturbed as well. So you've got a great big hole in your chinica intima here. Okay, so we've got some hole in our Chinica intima. Here is the basement membrane again, here. 
And here are endothelial cells here now. Right. Okay, so what is going to happen? Well, basically, what you have done is you have disturbed these tight junctions between the endothelial cells. And now, what can happen? You've got these von Willebrand factor proteins, which are bound with the collagen underneath here. But the point is that if you're a platelet over here, you can gain access to these von Willebrand factors in a, uh, in a way that you could never do before because these tight junctions were here before. You could not get past those tight junctions. And um, let me just um, explain this a little bit more. Tight junctions are often compared to uh, a six-pack of beer, basically, to the packaging that you get uh, a six-pack of beer in. So if I draw a six-pack of beer here, so... Beer comes in this sort of uh, plastic casing where you have the cans of beer, you have maybe six cans of beer, and they're all sort of suspended in this uh, sort of plastic wrapper thing that sort of tightly goes around each can uh, and holds them all together. And then you can pick it up by holding up the uh, piece of plastic and the cans of beer all stay in the piece of plastic, basically, because they're very tightly sort of bound by the plastic. So the cans sort of extend down, but the plastic just goes around their heads. Okay, that's kind of what a tight junction is like. The cans of beer are kind of like the endothelial cells here. And this plastic wrapper is this sort of tight junction. It goes around every sort of aspect of the cell. And you just cannot get to the basolateral side of the cell, which is the analogy of these bottom sides of the beer cans, uh, because this tight junction is just everywhere, basically. So the platelets cannot gain access to these basolateral portions of the cell, uh, and they can't gain access to the von Willebrand factor because of the tight junctions blocking them. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.